you would know beforehand whether your aircraft is approved for RVSM operations. Check on the weather conditions. That is important because turbulence can affect how well you maintain aircraft altitude. Just like in a marriage, your ability to maintain your temperament will determine the quality of your relationships. Hello pilots, welcome back to the channel. Today, let us talk about Question What is RVSM? It stands for Reduce Vertical Separation Minima As the name suggests, it is a separation of vertical distance between two aircrafts Before 1982, Aircrafts were separated by 2,000 feet vertically between flight level 290 and flight level 410. Then, as years goes by, more and more aircraft started occupying the airspace. IKO decided to reduce the separation to 1,000 feet. So, when you reduce the separation between aircrafts, there must be some requirements to ensure flight safety. Therefore, YASA and IKO says that the aeroplanes that fly within RVSM airspace must have two independent altitude measurement systems, an altitude alerting system, an automatic altitude control system to hold the aircraft height, and a transponder with an altitude reporting system. So, for the A320, we need two ADIRUs and two display monitoring computer, one ATC transponder, one FMGC for the autopilot, one FCU channel so you can select your altitude and have open climb and open descent modes. Two PFDs, obviously, to show your height and one flight warning computer for altitude alert function. So, the next question is, what is the level an aircraft need to maintain? Well, the rules are pilots should use odd flight levels when using a magnetic course of 000 degrees to 179 degrees and even flight levels for magnetic course of 180 degrees to 359 degrees. Now, let us look at what we need to do on the ground before accepting the aircraft. You would know beforehand whether your aircraft is approved for RVSM operations. Check on the weather conditions. That is important because Turbulence can affect how well you maintain aircraft altitude. Just like in a marriage, your ability to maintain your temperament will determine the quality of your relationships. C. There are no aircraft defects that hamper RVSM operations. This is by looking at the MEL if there are any defects. Once you have done that, check the altitudes. The altitude indication between the PFDs and airport elevation should be less than 75 feet. Between the two PFDs, the tolerance is plus minus 20 feet and plus minus 100 feet between ICs and PFDs. If a mechanical standby altimeter is installed, then the tolerance is plus minus 300 feet which is the tolerance between the PFDs and mechanical thingy. In flight, before entering RVSM airspace, check to see if the equipment is working and compare the altitudes between the PFDs and standby altimeters. Basically, we are comparing the values of ADR1, ADR2 and ADR3 that is providing us the numbers. The tolerances differs 
according to the flight level and speed we are at. The full table can be found in the Airbus FCOM. For flight level 390 and mark decimal 78, the maximum difference between ADR1 and ADR2 is 130 feet and between ADR3, it is 195 feet. Difference between standby altimeter and ADRs is 445 feet. Do make sure to report if there are any malfunctions or deviations and also be mindful when the aircraft is changing altitudes. Some failures that affect RVSM. One of it is a single ADR fault. Example NEF ADR 2 fault. The FOPFD will look like this. Take your time. Look at the ECAM, the SD page and overhead panel then proceed with the ECAM actions. Air data switching, set it to FO3. ADR2, off. Then check the barrel ref. Everything looks good. Status page, CAT3 single only, an inoperative system, ADR2 and CAT3. Three dual. Weather conditions can also be a factor that can influence the aircraft vertical path so it is best to be vigilant and avoid turbulence as much as we can. Phraseology if unable to maintain RVSM will be unable RVSM due equipment or 